What's up? So rewind to like 2018. I was a front-end engineering manager and I was working alongside my good friend and coworker Fabian. Uh, and we were thinking about ways to make our web application fast because the unfortunate reality of today's web applications is they are way too slow because we ship way too much JavaScript on the web. Okay, um, it's a real problem. It's a problem because when you ship a lot of JavaScript to your users, they end up downloading like megabytes of JavaScript. That download takes time, but then parsing it in the browser takes time, and then executing it in the browser takes time. All of this is makes things slow, and slow things are not considered good user experience. And when your user experience is not so good, people tend to abandon your app and not use your thing, and maybe not pay for your thing. And so we're thinking, how do we make our stuff fast? Uh, because like, look, I, I, I feel the pain of too much JavaScript. Honestly, like I think a great example of this is Reddit. If this was a talk, I'd like I'd do a show of hands. Like how many of you use Reddit? Um, I used to use Reddit more when it was faster. And then they did this rewrite and made it heavy. It felt heavy. It felt slow. In fact, let's look at it. So if I go here to the browser and if I open like reddit.com, look at this, look at this, look at this takes forever. Look, look, there's still skeleton UI. In fact, let's open the network tab and take a look-see. Okay, so we filtered on JavaScript. Let's reload and see how much JavaScript this website is shipping. The number, the number is here. Um, wow, it's still loading. So, wow, still. Okay, so we're around 1.8 megabytes of JavaScript. And here's the kicker, 1.8 megabytes of JavaScript, I haven't done anything. Like JavaScript is supposed to make a web page interactive and account for interactivity, yet I've done literally nothing. And there's two megabytes of JavaScript. Why? To contrast, let's look at old Reddit. So if we go to literally old.reddit.com, look at that. It's instant. Um, and if we come here, let's check the let's check how much JavaScript old Reddit loads. So if we reload, um, yeah, yeah, 412 kilo, 412 kilobytes compared to whatever nonsense, like two megabytes, my word. Um, I still think 400 kilobytes is a lot, but you know, it used to be fast and then JavaScript happened. I think this is partially because of developer experience. Like developer experience for building web apps has gotten like amazing. Unfortunately, that means it's way too amazing to like NPM install everything and use like a bazooka just to format dates and stuff. And usually, because of the convenience we have, we end up importing way too many things and not caring about bundle size. We ship these huge bundles of JavaScript and it's a problem. So my idea, right, back when I was working with Fabian in 2018 was let's code split everything and lazy load everything. Wow. And, and you know, Fabian was very quick to point out, yes, yes, but this is easy to get wrong and might break some stuff. And he's right, because we had to like write dynamic imports by hand and account for like naming our chunks correctly and then account for like giving them appropriate hashes such that when they change, we can invalidate the cache. Uh, we had to think about network breakdowns and what happens if someone's in a train and they go through a tunnel and they can't load this one thing they need. Um, do we cache? Do we prefetch? How do we prefetch? With a link at with a link tag or with a service worker or so many decisions. But perhaps the most perplexing thing was closures. Uh, for those of you who don't know JavaScript, closures are like functions, but stateful, you know? It's like when a function uses some enclosed uh, state from, from its surrounding scope. How do we factor that out into module scope when it depends on like lexical scope? It was very complicated. And so it was hard. The developer tooling for building great UIs was and is awesome, but the developer tooling for working in a lazy loaded code split async way wasn't. And this is why I am so excited about Quick. Now, about Quick, I met Mishko Hevery, the creator of Quick, and you know, you may know him from Angular JS and Angular, and uh, I think he co-created um, Karma, the test, the testing tool, right? I, I was with Mishko at Infobip Shift, a great conference in Croatia earlier, and we were at an after party talking, talking about literally everything, about keto, about food, about meat, about all the stuff, and also about his new tool called Quick. This was an after party, so I, I wasn't able to connect the dots as much, but I definitely got interested. And from that interest, I looked into it more. I got to playing with it, and oh my gosh, it, I feel like it, it, it's some type of revolution. Um, and I'll tell you why. Let's tell you why actually with the graphics. So if we go to TL Draw, right? Uh, I wanna draw something. So I will draw a little graph, um, two axes, some jacked up Y axis. Let's call this uh, bundle size. 
and and let's call this here on the x-axis interactions and usually um traditionally you know like applications just ship these like huge bundles um let's let's give let's give us some scale let's say this is 5 mb this is you know zero bytes right um now we just saw reddit send 2 mb for literally nothing uh, i i did i did no interactions 2 mb just off the bat this is how things were with react server components and stuff we'll talk about those this is changing with lazy loading this can change but traditionally this is how it's been if you're smart with you know lazy loading or whatever it is you might start with some type of smaller bundle size maybe this uh, maybe let's say that's that's 200 kb that's usually like react dom or something uh is around this much right um of course unminified whatever um and you'll usually start somewhere there and then if you lazy load you know you you will see some some jumps in stuff like this um the cool thing about quick is it starts here <laughs> with quick there's just there's, there's no javascript request over the network and it, it, the only thing quick apps ship with is like a one kilobyte quick loader and it's constant the size of your first load is always like one kilobyte of javascript that's it if you if you if you don't use interactions there's no need to load extra javascript quick loads javascript on demand it starts with a constant tiny size which is amazing because that means by default all your sites will ship a constant predictable one kilobyte of javascript always until a user does an interaction maybe this is better demonstrated with literally with a demo so what we'll do is we'll go here to, to the lab and we will npm create um quick at latest it'll ask us some questions and stuff i'm gonna skip that because npm <laughs> install takes a while um I, I create an app called counter i use a template um, and it's ready so if i cd counter um, what i'll do is i also want to um add tailwind so we'll do that just tailwind um it's my go-to for styling you know oh look it's npm install again let's get ready to wait one eternity later um, and we have we have it. Okay, so now let's open the editor, um, and also let's uh, let's start this. So npm start. It's going to open, isn't it? I hate when it opens. Uh, cool. No. Um, okay, let's. I I don't like it when it just hijacks my 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 browser. What what port is this? Let's see. Five one seven three. Of course. Why not? So this is what it looks like. Um, but I want to demo something for you. So let's let's actually just go to the code. And in routes, we'll make a new file. We'll call it counter slash index.tsx. And in this counter, I want to export const, uh, sorry, export default component. This is how you do quick components. They try to stay very close to React's developer experience, which I love. So we'll do const um, count. Why not? Use signal. Signals are taken from solid, great, great construct. And we'll just return some DOM. So we'll return H1. Actually, we'll return a div. I love div soup for breakfast. H1, counter. Count is, count is, count dot value. And then we'll add a button to increment it. Uh, on click, look at that. But notice on click doesn't work. It's on click dollar sign. We'll talk about what this dollar sign means in just a second, but I want to show you this working. So I'll save this. I need to restart my dev server. It's a bit buggy. It's going to open again. Awesome. So now if we go here to slash counter, okay, we have this and it works as expected, but I want to show you the first load JavaScript because I think it's pretty cool. If we go here to the network tab and we reload, Notice there's just some stuff from from Vite because that's my dev server. But if I remove, if I do minus Vite, there's just no no JavaScript. There's no JavaScript on load. It's pretty wild. Um, but you might be thinking, okay, well, how do we like click the button and if there's no JavaScript, what's up? Let's let's look at what happens. So we go back here. I click increment. Watch. I want you to watch this. Okay, watch the network tab. I click in increment. Oof. What is this? You so. It loaded JavaScript when I clicked it. And it, now that it's loaded, it just stays loaded. But what did it load? It loaded the core quick runtime, which is in a dev server. Uh, so it's not even compressed. It is two megabytes, you know, gzip, whatever. But this is only loaded when I interact. Um, and also with gzip, this is probably going to be smaller. And this 1.1 kilobyte thing off, look at this. It's my like function it's my like on click div button handler what what quick has done is um 
is taken this and code split it and extracted it to a different file and then loaded it on demand, like when I need it. That's freaking nuts uh, because it's able to even capture the lexical scope. Like, like, look at this, look. So if we, this count is outside this function, yet with code splitting, Quick has managed to do that. How? This is a great question. If we look at the, the element tree, actually, let's reload this from scratch. If we look at the element tree, what do we see here? If we go click, like, inspect this increment button, there's some directives that Quick adds to this, which is on click, it says, go load this file and go load this hash in this file. What is that? Quick maintain state in the browser um, here. So it stores a reference to like locations of code splitted things and context around them for closures. So it stores all this information here and really just adds one event listener, just one event listener um, to the browser, which is at the document level. When a click happens, do something, probably load this thing, this, this file, etc. That's how it, it, it works. And so as you can see, my first load JavaScript is non-existent. When I interact, then it loads. And not, not only does it load, it loads just the interaction I want, not every interaction. Behind the scenes, Quick builds like a dependency graph of imports and it can tell what is going to be needed sooner. So it can actually also, and it does prefetch things that you're likely to need sooner. It'll prefetch pro probably your shopping cart before the logout button, for example. Uh, pretty, pretty rad stuff. And so I think this is pretty awesome. Um, there's another cool concept here called resumability, um, where there is no hydration. So hydration, how does hydration work? Let's let's actually go to TL draw and, and, and draw a diagram. So if we go to TL draw, Yes, that's beautiful. Um, how does how do current apps do this hydration server client handoff? They do it like this. So again, well, let's draw another another graph. Um, so the the x axis is time, okay. And so over time, what happens? Well, what they'll do current solutions is one. They will. Can I enter text here, Steve? Awesome. So what what they'll they'll do is they'll download. JS. They first they'll download HTML, like if you're server rendering, right? And then they will download JS. Then they will um, eval JS. That's evaluate the JavaScript. That's parse and, and and execute. And then they will finally, you know, start attaching event listeners. Wow, it doesn't wrap. And then finally, they will. Um, restore state and then you can say hydration is complete so like so like all of this here wow, all of this is considered you know let's call this hydration so quick is like emphatically anti-hydration they don't do hydration at all so how quick works is you download html uh, let's actually add some labels here let's call this other tools um you can think of tools that do this react remix hydrogen uh still kit whatever and then and then quick like just downloads html that's it and then when you need javascript it'll download and evaluate minimal javascript that is needed at the time um, quick calls this concept resumability um, and it allows for some pretty cool use cases now in order to do this quick serializes everything um, when you pause the application. And so how it works is it renders things on the server, pauses, sends it to the client, resumes, continues. And then from the client, you can again pause, the freeze as it were, your app and restore the state somewhere else. And this is pretty nuts. Uh, let's, let's look at how that works here. So we have our counter, right? Let's um, accumulate some state. So let's do, I don't know, seven, lucky number. Um, and what I can do is let's go to the console uh, let's I'll select the HTML element because this is like this is look there's a queue container so that's the the quick container is here and it's resumed currently meaning it's it's stateful this, the truth the truth is in the client it's resumed from its paused state from the server so what I'm going to do is um, select the HTML element whoa um, so we'll do dollar zero that'll give us the HTML element and what I want fun fact I don't know if you knew this in your dev tools whatever you have selected dollar zero represents that thing Anyway, so we'll go and we'll do dollar zero. It stores a quick property on this and I can pause it from here. 
that returns a promise. And when it's done pausing, it's paused. And you can confirm that by quick containers paused. Now what I can do is I can like copy the entire HTML tree here, go to like some other browser, like let's go to Safari. Okay. And go to localhost 5173. Let's go to our counter route again, counter. Now notice I've lost my state, but I can restore my state. What I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to paste in HTML. I'm going to replace all my HTML. So I'll remove the HTML blank page and I'll paste. Look, I, I pasted in that, which is fine. It's fine that the seven appears, um, but of course I just replaced the HTML. So if, if we were going for a hydration based approach, um, we still need to attach event listeners to the button. We need to do all these things. But since this is resumability and not hydration, we don't need to do that. The HTML, the, the paused HTML is the source of truth. So watch this. So I come here. Um, that's all I've done. I've been talking to you. That's all I've done. I haven't like loaded JavaScript on the side or anything. I click, let's go to the network tab. I click increment. Oof. I pick up in a different browser where I left off because it like pulls down the JavaScript on demand. That's that's like unbelievable. I, I can't believe this happens. So to recap, we start with a finite set of JavaScript, like one kilobyte of, of you know, quick whatever, um, what quick loader, right? And then when I need it, I pull down JavaScript. I can pause my app, take my app somewhere else. And since the source of truth is HTML, since everything is serialized in HTML on pause and then deserialized later, I can literally just resume from client to server, from client to client, from everywhere. Um, I haven't really seen this anywhere. So now some of you might be asking, well, okay, how does that compare to like React server components? Because with React server components, the same thing. With React server components, you don't ship, you know, like imports and, and bundles JavaScript to your thing. You ship rendered JavaScript components, you ship rendered React components rather. And so with React server components, you also ship zero, you know, kilobytes to the browser. It's true. Um, but quick is like that, but every component is a server component automatically by virtue of the dollar sign. Um, just to recap, let's talk about the dollar sign. So if we come back here, everywhere you see a dollar sign, that's an indicator to quick to take whatever is in that closure and split it out code split it, make it a separate file and lazy load it later. The quick optimizer looks for dollar signs and is like, okay, I'm, I'm going to take this and put this somewhere else and then fetch it for you on demand. That's what the dollar sign means. That's it. The dollar sign handles all of the naming of the chunks, the splitting of the chunks, the loading of the chunks. The quick optimizer is like, I got you, fam. So how does it compare to React server components? If everything, including closures and stuff, was a server component, you could say they're comparable, but they're not. Also with React, you have a hydration step uh, with React DOM. React DOM is a pretty large dependency. It's not one kilobyte. And so it is like the smaller, faster alternative quick is. Um, how does it compare to Astro? So Astro also does hydration, but partial hydration, right? But uh, fundamentally, hydration is still hydration. It's downloading, executing JavaScript, attaching event listeners, restoring state. Quick doesn't do any of that. Quick, for this reason, it looks to me to be the fastest way to ship applications. I love that they didn't change the developer experience. So I know how to write quick apps I actually wrote like a Twitter clone for fun. I'll probably do a longer form video about that in quick. Just, well, not a full Twitter clone, uh, just this the timeline sidebars and things, a minimal Twitter clone. Um, and I knew how because I know react, the only difference is this dollar sign thing and signal like small changes for the quick optimizer and the splitting. But that's it. Um, now, I understand some of you might have the question on your mind. Um, okay, but since everything's lazy loaded over the network on demand, what if I start using a quick app on a train and then my train goes through a tunnel and then I click a button and then I, it can't import the JavaScript? Oh no! Um, real concern. Thankfully, the quick people, Mishko and his team, have thought about it. Um, and what they're doing is prefetching things. So if you can make that first load, on that first load, it will prefetch things in order of what's likely to be needed soonest at that time using a service worker and cache it. So then you're good. It just does it in a separate thread so it doesn't block your, your page. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, so you will still have issues in, in a tunnel, but they're the same issues as with any other app in this case because the interactive parts of your app are prefetched. Um, it's pretty rad. Now, I think, you know, my final deterrent, right, was like, or maybe penultimate deterrent was, I have an existing React code base. 
I want to move it to quick, but I can't. Except you can. Um, there's a there's a function called here. Let's let's see if we can find it. There's a function called quickify. Quickify app. Um, builder.io. Yeah, it's quick react. So in the docs, I saw this thing where you can literally just like wrap react components in quickify and it will with some caveats it will um you know quickify your react components it does have some limitations but it's a cumulative upgrade path if you want to um I, okay the last thing i can think of that has kept me from using quick more abundantly is is there a framework is there something like next.js but for quick yeah there is it's called quick city and in fact it has more feature parity with Next.js 13 than I thought. It literally has support for like layouts and nested layouts. Um, it has support for, you know, an equivalent app directory. Um, most, it has support for like route groups. It has a bunch of Next.js feature parity that I didn't think it would have. It's good. Um, of course, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It's, it's beta. There's still some issues uh, in it. There's some issues I've had today. I've spent hours trying to solve. I couldn't, so I gave up, changed the video a bit. Um, so it's not perfect, but hey, look, at the end of the day, um, we're shipping one kilobyte on initial load. It's like automatic Lighthouse 100, right? Performance-wise, anyway. Um, it's It then loads things on demand as you need them, meaning if, if you have some path that a user will never take, you're not shipping JavaScript for that. It's like it, it doesn't even exist to your users. It might exist in your code base as technical debt, but your users don't pay the cost. Historically, users have paid our technical debts. Quick remedies that. I love the fact that it's it's possible and resumable across different clients and servers. Um, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm excited. I've been building things with Quick so far, and I love it. And I think you should give it a try too. Those are my thoughts. I want to know yours. What do you think? Did I miss something? Am I just making a complete... Um, I can't swear, a complete idiot of myself. Uh, let me know in the comments or at me on Twitter. But for now, that's been it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.